this week as I was reading, the Bible was saying that the Lord chose the lowly things of this world. He chose the despised things of this world. He chose things that are not. And the reason he did that is to, to shame the wise and those who think they are. I pray that this day we shall not think of ourselves to be anything apart from what the Lord has made us to be. Amen? Um, I want to start by reading the word of God in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, uh, verse 1 to 4. And this is what the word of God says. The God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, he has in these days spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had himself patched our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Having become so much better than the angels, he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you because of your word today. Thank you for choosing to give us your only begotten, beloved son, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. We celebrate the sacrifice of the cross. We celebrate the work of the cross. We celebrate that you chose us. Jesus, we thank you that you left all the glory of heaven and came that you may identify with us. You came that you may die in our place. We bless you, God. Thank you. We worship you. And we ask that today, God, take your place. Take your place in our hearts. In the name of Jesus, we respect you and we love you. Thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for life and life in abundance. Thank you for your salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today is Easter. Easter Sunday, bonus if you will. Um, I want us to, to do something that is entitled or to share on a topic that I'm calling the passion. And we all know what the passion is. The passion really, uh, by meaning, it is the sufferings and death of Jesus Christ. It is the events that led to his ultimate death on the cross. The sufferings and all that you have. I want us to reflect on this day that we are having and ask ourselves, why are we here and how did we get here? Today is Easter Sunday, as I've said. But before today, there was Friday. There was Friday. And I hear some of you call it Good Friday. On Friday, I thought that all was lost when that dragged cross took his life at the hands of the Roman soldiers. But is it really the soldiers? Is it the soldiers that killed and crucified him? Or what really made him end up on the cross? No, it is not the soldiers. For I remember reading something, a phrase in the holy book that read, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So it is not the soldiers who crucified him. I crucified him. Not his sins, but my sins took him up on the cross. To die on a tree he planted and at the hands of the man he created. He died at the hands of his creation. That was Friday. But today is on Sunday. And the breaking news is he is alive. The breaking news again, he is alive. Who hung on a tree on a Friday is risen. And that is the report we are receiving right direct from <laughs> our reporter, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Jesus, Salome, and a fellow who has come to confirm by the name of Simon Peter that he is risen. Have you received the news of his rising? Have you? Who says no? That must be new in Jerusalem. You must be new around. Have you not heard the events that have taken place concerning Jesus of Nazareth who suffered and was crucified on Friday and now he's alive? Or somebody bring him up to date? 
concerning what has happened. What has if you were? That was Friday, and today is Sunday. Now, in the view of the finished work on the cross, allow me to start by thanking the Lord uh, for his doing. And allow me also to use the very beautiful words, but I didn't know that they will sing that song. It is the doing of the Lord, or it is the Lamb. Uh, I have not written those relics right now. I had written them. We had not communicated that they shall sing that. It is the working of the Lord. So join me as we sing, as we read those relics. Worthy is the Lamb, that song written by Darlene. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame. I was shameful and you are shameful, but he bore your shame. In love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the nail-pierced hands. Washed me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and embrace. Worthy is the Lamb seated on the throne. Crown you with the many crowns. You reign victorious high and lifted up. Jesus, Son of God, the darling of heaven crucified, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, and worthy is the Lamb. Amen. Amen. A bit of history and meaning of Easter. Um, I've said it all started on Friday, but before today, actually today is a remembrance. It is not this Friday. It happened, it happened over 2,000 years ago. Today is this time Jesus has risen. He is alive. He is he's no longer in the tomb. He is no longer in the grave. He is alive. Jesus is our hope. He is alive. Our hope is alive. Our faith is alive. Our testimony and our salvation holds because Jesus is alive. Have you ever wondered what would have happened or what would have become of your faith and life had Jesus not resurrected? ever wondered if Jesus died and never resurrected, what would have become of your faith? Thank be to God he's alive. Easter is a constant reminder that death is defeated, that death has been swallowed up in victory. Amen? 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verses 54, we can have it on the screen. We see what Paul is telling this church. Um, so when this corruptible has put on incorruptible and this mortal has put on immortality, then what shall, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. We continue. 55. Oh death, where is your sting? Oh heads, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. 57. But thanks be to God who gives us victory, our Lord Jesus Christ, through our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the victory we have. You have no reason to fear death. You have no reason to fear anything. It has been swallowed up in victory. We are celebrating victory not only over your sicknesses, not only over your finances, but victory over death. It has been swallowed up in victory. And thanks be to our Savior who has given us victory. Amen? Amen. So today, Easter, other name of Easter, as we have said, it is the Resurrection Day or the Resurrection Sunday. Others call it the Day of Salvation. Yes, really, the Day of Salvation. The Day of the Lord. That's why you hear in many places, if you go by, they call Sunday the Day of the Lord to meaning or to mean Jesus rose on this day, the Resurrection Sunday. And the first Easter, as has alluded, was marked over 2,000 years ago uh, by the first eyewitnesses. And some disciples of Jesus, because by this time they, they are less one, but some disciples of Jesus, uh, but by three ladies, and I thank God because of ladies, amen? Amen. 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 I thank God because of ladies. They are wonderful people. Amen. They are, I don't know how to explain, but they are wonderful people. They are wonderful people. The Lord bless you, ladies. They were the very first one to go and witness. But because of the society, it was so patriarchal, they could not believe their report. So Simon Peter had to go and see for himself. I said I am Peter, but I thank God. Amen? 
they had to go and see for themselves. So that was Mary Magdalene, Mary mother of James. Mary mother of Jesus, by the way, James, the half-brother of Jesus. So this is the Mary mother of Jesus. And Salome. Uh, in other versions, they say Joanne. I don't know whether Joanne was another lady, so they were four, or was another name. I do not know. Now, when the Sabbath was passed, that is according to Mark 16, we can have it. Um, we see what happened, Mark 16. Now, when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices that they might come and anoint him. Let's go on. Very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they said among themselves, who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? But when they looked up, they saw the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large. And, the, and entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe sitting at the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed, you sick of Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified, he's risen. He's not here. See the place where they laid him. Praise God. I think it's the account of Luke that says, the man asked them a question. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Why are you looking for the living among? Our place is not in the dead. Our place is the living in Jesus' name. He is alive again. So, they witnessed it. First time. So, salvation is about first-hand experience again. We have said this is Salvation Sunday. So salvation is about first-hand experience. It's about an eyewitness. It is a very personal experience. The disciples went to the tomb to see for themselves, including the doubting Thomas. He had to touch and see that he really is the Christ. He had to witness to himself. He had to personalize the experience that I have seen and witnessed. He has Reason, have you experienced it firsthand? Have you experienced it personally? Experienced it personally? You see, you cannot describe the sweetness of honey to one who has never tasted it. So the sweetness and the goodness of the Lord cannot be communicated by just words. You need to experience it personally. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is sweet. You test for yourself, I test for myself. If I told you how the honey tastes, would you feel the taste? Until you taste the honey for yourself, until you taste that sweetness. So it's about experiential encounter with Christ Jesus. And until then, shall you be able to say, His reason, I am a testimony. Praise the Lord. Amen. Experience first time. Ask your neighbor, have you experienced it first hand? Ask them. His death, the death of our Savior. There's no resurrection without death. Otherwise, he resurrected from there was death so that there could be resurrection, right? And if you are to celebrate the resurrection of God, we are all the more to celebrate his death. If you are to remember his resurrection, we are to remember all the more his death. And if you are to remember his death, we are to remember why he died. Why he died. He dies so that a day like this, today, Easter Sunday, thousands upon thousands of believers would be gathered in churches all over the world to remember and to celebrate the victory that brought us salvation. He died for our peace. He died for our healing. He died for forgiveness. So if you are sick, he died for your healing. If you don't have peace, he died for your peace. So receive the peace that Jesus died to bring you. Amen. He died for your freedom. If you are in any kind of bondage, may you receive the freedom of God. He died that you may be set free and be set free indeed. For he who the Son sets free, then he is free. He died that you may live. You see, you don't know because you were not there. I equally was not there. But I believe when the Bible tells me that he died that I may be alive today. And not just today, but even after I rest, I will live again. I will reign together with him. 
not just in this life, but in the next life and all the lives that there could be, ever be. That is eternity. Because when he came, he was given a name, eternal father. Bon I don't know whether you, you are getting it. Are you getting it? You know, for us, we don't die. We just rest. We just rest. I thank God because he gives us some rest. And then he makes sure that in our resting, our ears are alert so that when the, that great trumpet blows, we shall hear it. <laughs> so sweet to trust in Jesus. So sweet to trust in Jesus. Jesus did more than just death. If you examine, closely examine at the circumstances of his death, the way he died, he did more than just dying. He not only died, he died on the cross. He died by crucifixion. He not only was crucified, he was crucified in between two thieves. Did he deserve to die with thieves? Did he deserve to die by crucifixion? But you and I deserved. And I was thinking, why in between two thieves, when you die that way, a person who was just passing by because he was crucified on a hill, between a junction or at crossroads, the people who did not know him, they were saying, look at the thieves. So he died a thief. He was not a thief. I was a thief. He died in my place. So I was a thief that died. So I deserved to die like a thief because I was one. He died the death of a blasphemer. I was the one who had blasphemed. So he died in my place. He died the death, the shameful death, humiliating death, imaginable. Because that was my place. So when you're celebrating today, remember who what led to today. Who what led to today. It is the finished work of Jesus on the cross. He died a horrible death because I was horrible and I deserved that death instead. He died such a cruel death so that every sin could be punished on the cross. He was spat on, he was mocked, he was given a crown of thorns, all those circumstances, every one of them, you were supposed to go through them. But he died that way so that he could punish every sin, so that every sin could be silenced, that I could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Not by the fact of earning it, but by the fact that he did it on my behalf. He died by crucifixion. If you read history, crucifixion was considered one of the most gruesome and brutal modes of death. I don't have time to take you down the 39 lashes with the metal dumbbells at the end. Have you ever seen soldiers with that a lash? Is it here? The whip that is slender, siju in a middle of that one. So then it used to contain some metal at the end. So that when you, and then she had lashes. See, you come now, can I explain? So that when you're just a given one, when it comes back, it rips your flesh off, and he received that nine of them. On top of that, he received a crown. Not a crown of anything, but a crown of? A crown of thorns. All that package, you was supposed to take that patch, pa package. But he took all of that so that I could today celebrate the victory. Crucifixion was most painful and humiliating death imaginable. And by the way, this form of, ex of ex execution was not performed to the Roman citizens. Then Israel was under the Roman leadership or governance. So this death was reserved for the slaves, the strangers, and the enemies of the government or the enemies of the state. It was not, and even the thieves, it was not for the Roman citizens because it was, it was, it was such a shame for a Roman citizen to die by crucifixion. So it was a reserve for slaves, it was a reserve for prisoners and enemies of the states. And, and thieves, you could see thieves there. So, so all that shame, all that shame, so that the writings of Paul in the book of Romans can say that uh, I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord. 
He was ashamed so that today I can stand unashamed here and uh, proclaim the living Jesus to you. Wanna see you eh? The message of today is simple. The message of today is that Jesus is alive. Wanna see you eh? It is very simple. So I'm not trying to get complicated. I'm just trying to tell you that somebody died in your place. Somebody did it for you so that you can celebrate. You remember when Pastor Brian was giving us a very good analogy of his days in high school when the prefects uh, those days used to punish the students. I thank God I, I found it when it was almost dying off. And he told us they suffer so that we don't have to. <laughs> I'm using his words, not my words. There, is, there are some people who suffer so that you don't have to suffer. When I hear, there are some people even literally in real life, your parents suffered so that you can have a good education. I respect them, but most of them, they were not able to get the privileges that we are enjoying right now. The privilege of even being in the city at, in your 20s, going to the best schools, universities, the best education, the best networking, being in Shiloh here. So even by their being here in Shiloh, some people sacrificed their money and everything so that we can be here in Shiloh. Bon Jesus suffered that you don't have to suffer. Jesus went through all this so that you don't have to go all the ways. Amen? This was God's plan for salvation from the very beginning. And when man sinned in the Garden of Eden, uh, God was grieved and he chased the man out of the Garden. But even with all that, the heart of God is the heart of forgiveness. Is a heart of mercy or is a merciful heart. It's a heart that pardons. The Bible says that you will not always accuse you. Remember, mercy. The message of the cross, therefore, it cannot be sufficiently taught without mentioning the forgiveness that came with it. And forgiveness is so costly. Jesus counted the cost and paid it. Last Sunday we were again told, count the cost and pay. When you count, you do what you pay. Jesus counted and paid. Count the cost. There is the cost of discipleship, but the salvation is very free. But there is a cost of discipleship. Yes. The gospel is expensive. There is a cost of discipleship. So you have to count the cost. So forgiveness. I'm talking about the forgiveness. As one of the, of the, of the package of the cross. The cross was a package and forgiveness was... Love was there. The masses together with the forgiveness of God were there. Forgiveness is one of the elements or the package in the cross. And by definition, secular definition that is, forgiveness is a conscious and deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment and vengeance and bitterness towards a person or a group who has harmed you. I mark this, regardless of whether they actually deserve your forgiveness. I repeat again. It is a conscious and deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment, vengeance, bitterness towards a person or a group who has harmed you, regardless whether they deserve your forgiveness or not. They may, des- they may not be deserving your forgiveness, but you need healing. You see, we live a lie when we say, they hurt me. I cannot forgive them. You are the one who is paying. They don't deserve it, but you need to get healed. You need to move on. They may not deserve it. And the only way to get healed and to move on is to release that bitterness through forgiveness. Regardless, regardless whether they deserve it, we never deserve the forgiveness of God. We never, we never deserve it. But he forgave us. So why are you so busy quarreling with your neighbor? He doesn't deserve it. Did you deserve the forgiveness of the cross in the first place? You see, we should always view our neighbors in the eyes of the finished work of the cross. Whatever was done on the cross, we reciprocate. We reciprocate. God loved us, we love one another. God pardoned us, we pardon one another. We're going to see how that uh, goes in a short while. The message of the cross is love and love that forgives again. Does your love forgive? Does your love hold grudges? First Corinthians chapter 13, the love text, the love chapter from verse 4. Do we have people who are in love this morning? Do we have people who are in love? 
please go and read First Corinthians chapter 13. <laughs> you know, it is a miss to be in love and you don't know the text and the chapter of love. Those people who are in relationship this time, this, this morning and this day, and you do not have, know that chapter, I will not read it for you. But it's very bad. There is a problem. If you're in love and you don't know the chapter of love, true love never? True love never? Ah, no, you people, go. I know you are in love somewhere. Somebody, somebody, can you smell some love? Somebody is in love. Go and read that chapter of love. So the purpose, <laughs> uh, I've said that the message of the cross is the message of love, and love that forgives. If there's any reason why Jesus died, is to forgive us, is to forgive us, to purge our sins, to forgive us, to forgive our sins because we had sinned. They are called our sins because we are the one who had sinned our sins. Not his sins, not her sin, my sins. Praise the Lord. Uh, so the purpose of Jesus dying on the cross was that humanity and the whole creation could be forgiven. Forgiveness was the reason of a death on a tree. The whole creation was released from the curse of God on the account of Jesus dying on a cross. So therefore, we cannot claim to be celebrating the works of the cross today where we are still holding grudges and bitterness against our brothers and sisters who Christ died for at the cross. I said again, we cannot um, purport to be beneficiaries of the finished work on the cross today while we are still holding grudges and bitterness towards our brothers and sisters. If Christ forgave them, who are you not to forgive them? If Christ forgive us, who are you not to forgive one another? I want to really drive that through into your heart. Because when I was preparing this, I, I almost left it and I was like, God, how many times have I failed to forgive? How many people have I failed to forgive? I forgot you forgive me. I forgot that every time I pray, I tell you to forgive me. But I'm here holding my brother I'm here holding my sister in my heart, harboring bitterness and grudges. We are here because today is Easter. How many people have you not forgiven? Who is that in your heart you still hold grudges against? While you are saying, thank you, Jesus, forgive you. Have you forgiven your brother? Have you forgiven your sister? Have you forgiven? Have you forgiven them? The masses of the cross demand that we also show mercy. The grace of the cross demands that we also show grace. Uh, you are forgiven. Please forgive. The cross demands that you forgive one another. Praise the Lord. It is required of us to do again to others as Christ did to us. We forgive as Christ forgave. We can have Ephesians up there, chapter 4 and verses 32. Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4 and the verses 32. And be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Forgiving one another. Even as God in Christ forgave you, it is not my request, it is not my opinion, it is the word of God. That Christ forgave you, forgive your neighbor, forgive your friend. In Colossians 3 and 13, Colossians 3 13, bear with one another and forgive one another. Do what? Bear with one another and forgiveness is so central for a harmonious coexistence. It is so key and critical if we are to, to be called Christians that we are forgiveness. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is one of the riches of the cross. We don't earn it. If we never earned it, do not let your neighbor earn it from you. If you never earn it from God, why do you want your neighbor to earn it from you? May the Lord help us. 
May the Lord help us. Ephesians 4, that one, the Bible says, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, all bitterness, all clamor, all wrath, all anger, evil speaking be put away from you. Um, now, Mark chapter 11, verses 25, the Bible says this, And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive them or forgive him. That your Father in heaven may also do what? May forgive you your trespasses. If you have anything against someone, if you are accusing them of anything, when you stand to pray, do what? Forgive. When you stood to pray today, did you forgive somebody? Or all of us are clean. We have been patched with high soap, spotless, clean, white as snow. Forgive. When you stand to pray, forgive one another. Forgive one another. Amen? Amen. Ephesians 1.7 the Bible says that in him we have the redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. We have redemption. Jesus died to forgive us. Forgive one another. In Luke chapter 23, verses 34, as Jesus was dying on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast a lot. Uh, this is Jesus. Father, forgive them. Can you imagine? Um, they have taken him from Jerusalem. I don't know how many miles or kilometers are, are those. Are they to Golgotha. They have given him the full dose of the cruc They have flogged him. They have given him or put on him a crown of thorns. They have wiped him. They have beaten him. They have spat on him. They have mocked him on the cross, telling him, if you're the son of God, Take yourself from there. You, you, you prophesy, prophesy now. You healed others. You resurrect. Do it now unto yourself. They did all those things. They even divided his garments. And then his prayer is, forgive them, Father. They do not know. Did they know what they were doing? Did the soldiers know what they were doing? Did they? They did, right? They didn't know. If I slap you right now, I'm not going to do that, I promise. When I swear... If your neighbor slaps you with the holy anointing, does he know what he's doing? Okay, he knows. But what should be a prayer? Father? <laughs> wow. It is so deep. It is so deep, <laughs> like it is deep. And it is as difficult as your expressions are. That is how difficult it is. To tell someone he didn't know what he did, he gossiped me. Father, forgive me. He didn't know what he was doing. Mm -mm. He didn't know. How could you? Uh... <laughs> I'm not laughing, but I am amazed at the riches of the cross and how deep forgiveness is. You see, if you start looking for a reason, to forgive someone, you will never have one. If you start looking for a reason why someone deserves your forgiveness, you will never see one. Like, there are all the reasons you could get in this world why someone did what they did to you. And you have said they knew what they were doing, they are of age, Again, I want to borrow his example. Mimi, speaking in tongues filled with the Holy Ghost. And he dared do this to me. But then there was a time I used to think like that. I was like, how can they, they touch the anointed? Do they know the anointing I carry? Do they have an idea? I'm the son of the living God. Here, cast that crown. Cast out that crown and tell God, forgive them for they know not what they were doing. 
forgive them. We do not forgive them because they deserve it, but because we need to forgive them anyway. We need to. Stephen, I thank God Stephen is here. Stephen is here. But Stephen of the Bible, one of the deacons, I thank God for the people who give their children prophetic names and good names. Stephen was one of the deacons, and the Bible recalls that he was full of the Holy Ghost and nobody could stand his wisdom. That be your portion, man of God. Acts 7, 60 says, Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. These are the examples of people who lived and forgave. Stephen, you know what happened to Stephen? What happened to him? He was stoned. Why was he stoned? Can you say that one? That one. When they found they could not resist his wisdom, they hired some men. They hired some people to accuse him falsely so that they, they stoned him to death. Stoning someone to death. <laughs> stoning someone to death. Like unachapo mawe hadi unaku, unakufa. It's a beautiful account that when Stephen was dying, he said, Father, do not hold this against that is the heart of God. That should be the heart of the children of God. Forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they are doing. And now I come to another chapter. We continue preaching ourselves with the word of God. The word of God is a sword. So if you hear something sharp and penetrating, it should be like that. It is the word of God, sharper than any double-edged sword piercing to dividing of soul and spirit joints and marrows so that everything will be laid bare before God. I pray that we are going to be laid bare, that the Lord and his word may work on us and perfect us that we become as he wants us to become. Forgiveness is conditional. Very conditional. Very conditional. For us to be forgiven, we are required to forgive. I read this and I was startled for a moment. I was like, so when I pray without forgiving one another, I am not forgiven. I do not know. But for us to be forgiven, we have to forgive others. Luke 6, 7, the Bible says, judge not and you shall not be judged. Condemn not and you shall not be condemned. Um, forgive and you will be forgiven. Forgive and you will. Uh, yeah. We read another one in Matthew 6, 14. Bear with me. Matthew uh, 6.14 For if you forgive men their trespasses Can we have it in NIV kindly? NIV NIV For if you forgive other people when they sin against you your heavenly father will also forgive you. Let's now go to uh, 15. But if you do not forgive others their sins, you are Father will not, will not, no, no, you're not, will not forgive your sins. Uh, forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. That is verse 14, verse 15. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. These are the words of Jesus. And I do not know really. I, I, I refuse to think deeper of this scripture because I don't know where I am. But my prayer is, God, I forgive them even those I do not know. So today, if there is someone you are holding bitterness or grudges, if there is someone you have not forgiven and you have prayed today to be forgiven, have you been forgiven? I do not know. Do not answer. But it is required of us to forgive so that our Father can forgive us. So if we are going to God and asking for forgiveness, and maybe, but it happens so funny, that someone has maybe abused you either verbally or done something wrong to you, and you feel bitter again about it. So you go to God asking for, to forgive you, but you don't forgive them. I do not know, I don't want to say how that prayer will go or where it will go, but it is required of us. We forgive first so that God can forgive. 
forgive us. Uh, in the Lord's Prayer, we know the Lord's Prayer? Can we say it all together now that we are believers? One, two, three. Allowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread. As we forgive. Do you forgive? Forgive us as we forgive. Before you ask for forgiveness, you're supposed to have forgiven. Do you forgive? This morning, did you forgive somebody? I want to emphasize this because I realize sometimes we miss it because of, we miss the protocol. We forgive others so that we can be forgiven. So if you have been praying that prayer and you have someone you have not forgiven, if I say that you lied to God, forgive me as I forgive others and you are not forgiven your brother. Nikisema ulidanganya, itakosea. May the Lord help you to forgive. I'm not saying I do it all or I'm the best student or I am the best performer. I in the lesson of forgiveness I have attained 101. No. I'm saying we need the grace of God. Forgiveness is a product of grace. So we need the grace of God. Praise God. He who claims uh, to be under grace must experience or must exercise forgiveness. Let us forgive one another. We pray that may the Lord forgive us as we forgive others. So uh, it's an example that the Lord has forgiven us. We have to forgive one another. I don't know how I can put that, but it is as loud as that. It is as clear as that. That before we can ask for forgiveness, we forgive one another. Jesus illustrated that forgiveness is a product of grace on the account of the woman caught in adultery. We know that account in John 8 uh, from verse 1 to 11. We know it. We're not going to read it. But if you don't know it, I'm, I'm going to give you the verse of the book. It's John chapter 8, verse 1 to 11. There was a woman. For those who do not know the account, there's a woman. The Bible says a woman who was caught in the very act of, of adultery. She was not alone. Now, where the man was, or where they have written the account of the man, I do not know. But here they have written only the, the woman. It is the woman who was presented to Jesus. Where the man was, I do not know. But she was not committing adultery alone, I suppose, I presume. So, men, Jesus, he was brought this case. Now, uh, alikuwa nampima sana. The Pharisees and the teachers of the road, they wanted to see what Jesus will say. So that he can, they can have something to say against him, against the law. That he has broken the law. Uh, so, Jesus, whatever he did, he told them, if there's any one of you who has never seen, do what? Be the first one too? So, you know, can you forgive What you are claiming, I cannot forgive at all if one evil. So, forgive. So, Jesus let the woman go despite of the grievous sin. It was one of the grievous sin, maybe according to them. He let the woman go just, or in spite of her grievous sin. And that is what grace does. Grace lets go. Grace forgives. Grace lets go and grace forgives. Grace lets go. Grace forgives. Extend some grace to your neighbor. Extend some grace to your friend. Let go. Forgive. Let go and forgive. I want to read another account in Matthew chapter 18 and verses 23. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18 verses 23. Downwards. This is what the Bible says. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000. Mark, how many? How much? 10,000. Forget about the talents, but 10,000. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife. With who? His wife. <laughs> it shall not be a portion in Jesus' name. And children and all that he had, and that the payment be 
kitambo hakuna mchezo wacha nao watu wanabeba tv wewe ulikuwa na choto na familia yako yote mkalipa huko mkiwa slaves it was as serious as that unaona kukatalia ndani ya mtu <laughs> let us continue but as he was not able to pay oh sorry the servant therefore fell down before him saying master master have patience with me and i will pay you all so mnajua vya tunanyanya kianga master tafadhali have patience kwa hivyo kama uko na deni ya mtu nyenyekea nyenyekea usiende hapo na kiburi yote na uko na deni ya mtu nyenyekea eh then the master of the servant was moved with compassion released him and forgave him the debt the master was moved with unaona kunyenyekea inafanyaga mtu akuwe moved eh na compassion and released him from the dead but that servant went out the same servant who had been forgiven the debt of how much 10000 10000 maybe 10000 dollars dollars will do us best not shillings dollars 10000 so instead of talents you can put dollars 10000 dollars but that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him 100 denario 100 dollars we use dollars uh, for the inter- in the interest of this context for this context 100 dollar he had owed his master how much 10000 vis-a-vis 100 which is more uh-huh. you are bright students and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat what saying pay me what you owe you alikuwa bruto huyu ni mnoma bana yani hata amshiki mashati throat so his fellow sorry <laughs> sometimes if you see the bible how i see it in a kind of drama as in unaona ani anakushika tu sorry guys so his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him saying have patience with me i will pay you all exact words that his master used pale ju he fell down turudi hapo kidogo he fell down we are falling down he fell eh have patience fell he fell down at his feet and begged him saying have patience with me and i will pay you all tafadhali achilia throat yangu ni hurumi eh i will pay you all please i will pay you all and he would not but he went and threw him into pri- prison till he should pay the debt the master of this person would not listen to him he threw him in prison until he would pay so that one so when his fellow servants saw what had been done they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done and there then his master after he had called him said to him you wicked servant i forgave you all that debt because you begged me should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant just as i had pity on you should you wanjela should you demta should you everybody not have had pity on your brother just as christ on the cross had pity on you to me this just does not just speak about money and denarian talent and dollars it is speaks of how we are supposed to show grace show compassion you see you may think ah this is yazifanya hivyo mimi ni komsei poa mimi najua but this is us this is us someone shows you a favor but you cannot reciprocate it to someone someone does something to, not even someone jesus has already done it unaweza angalia useme mimi hakuna mtu ambaye anifanyia favor so sina reference sina mahali naitoa jesus did it for you jesus did manze jesus did it for us let us do for one another you see this one ana anataka kumnyonga na yeye amesamehewa na kwanza yeye he had owed 10000 10000 and this is 100000 only hata haezi fanya maths eh amesamehewa pia pamoja na bibi na watoto by the way amesamehewa this is us by the way this is us this is us ah au sijitoe hapo wewe ni huyo this is us so today we need to repent 
because of being unfair and unjust to others when the Lord was so merciful to us. He showed us mercy, but we have never shown mercy. This is us. You know, you may not predict when or who will offend you. But if you get offended, please forgive. Pastor Brian says something. Today I'm quoting him. Um, he says that leave some allowance for offense. You don't know when it may come. You need to be get unoffended, the unoffendable culture or the unoffendable uh, hashtag that he goes preaching. And that is really the self-control, the attitude and the lifestyle of believers. You will get offended. At us, Leo, I pray that there be none. But forgive me, please. If I have heard you, forgive. Forgive me. Forgive your brother. I am saying, always, always, always forgive. And forgiveness, by the way, is sin. And forgiveness is sin. It is sin. Because if God has even put it central in the Lord, the Lord's prayer is our gold standard of how a prayer should look like. So in that prayer, there should be worship, there should be forgiveness and thanksgiving. There should be forgiveness. So if it is there and you have failed to forgive, have you not sinned or have you sinned? Let us forgive one another. I want to just share a few effects of unforgiveness and bitterness. And then we are going to pray. Because I feel we need to pray. Uh, that as we celebrate this Easter, we shall not do it just as just as a formality. You know, some people, the only thing they know about Easter is holiday. Easter holiday. I pray that that would not be us in Jesus' name. Pray that we shall understand the reason and where it all began. One of the effects of unforgiveness is unproductiveness and ineffectiveness in ministry and life. You cannot be productive when you harbor all the bitterness that you, there is in this world. You cannot even lead worship. You cannot preach. You cannot pray. You cannot read Bible study. You cannot lead YP very well. You cannot lead Axis or Ablaze. I'm saying this because we are youth and we, that is where we belong. You cannot be an effective minister or a steward if you have bad bitterness. Unforgiveness and bitterness will always hinder you, will always block the flow.